I enjoy doing door frames like this because they're not plastered in and the wedges haven't been trimmed off so you can actually get access to them. So don't ever assume just because you've done this on the bench but it's going to be square when you fit it because obviously you're bullying the wood around, things can change, things can twist, it can sort. If I'm out by even half a mil, rather than planing something off to dress the door to the frame, I'm going to be able to hang the frame to the door which is always a better job I think. Morning guys, welcome to the channel. This is Build of a and &E, and today I'm going to be fitting a door lining into brand new stud work. I'm just going to take you through the process, how I personally like to do it. First thing I like to do anyway, I'm sure everyone's got their own, their own methods, their own first, second and third step that they like to take to uh, make sure a door lining's right. I prefer to use a, a laser level, just a personal preference. Obviously if you haven't got one, six foot level's perfectly all right, but uh, this is how I do it. Now, I always like to start from one side and work my way to the top and then go down to the opposite side, checking as I go along. First thing to do is with your wedges, make sure that your margins are nice and even. There's about probably just over a half inch gap each side. I've just evened that out. So I've set my laser level to the top point because that's my fixed point. Nipped it up with my uh, impactor just to make sure it's nice and solid. Set my laser level to this line. Now what that'll enable me to do is work my way down to the bottom, making sure that everything's nice and plumb. These are my wedges, I've uh, just quickly made these on the job saw out of offcuts. Two and a half degree angle on each side, making it four degrees. I don't like to go anything over that because I've found if you make them too wide, then they have a tendency potentially to slip out. Doesn't very rarely happens, but I just think this is a nicer job. So this is where you, you've got your top line there. And now we've got to line this up with the bottom. So all I do, take my wedges, one on top of the other and just push them in. As soon as your laser touches, you know you're in the right position. Nip it up. So now we know from top to bottom, that's nice and plumb. So all it's a case of doing now, is start working your way up, making sure that uh, your laser level hits the line bang on where you want it. So next one. And what you can do is when you're somewhere near, because you can see from the laser level, this needs to come out a slight amount. And then that'll get you just right. And then repeat the process up until the top. I like to get a wedge just to make sure that it's right. Highlights the laser. Spot on, spot on, spot on. All the way down. So now we know that this is plumb. Now that gives us a great starting point. So it means I can get this header nice and square and then get this nice and parallel. And that's what you want to hang the perfect line in. Get your uh, framing square. Now that is pretty spot on. Now I don't know if you've noticed, I've put, put this cross pattern here. Now when I was assembling this and fabricating this, I had it on the bench, I took my square, I made sure this was 90 degrees and then put this uh, temporary pattern on. Now what this does, it gets it near enough square. Now, it's not guaranteed, so don't ever assume just because you've done this on the bench, but it's gonna be square when you fit it, because obviously you're bullying the wood around, things can change, things can twist and can sort. This is just a method that you do to get it somewhere near, so that you're not having to mess around, pack it up and all the rest of it. So, little tip there. Also, along the bottom, there's a button here, and what that does, it just uh, makes sure this is nice and parallel. So when you start fitting this, you know that you're gonna be somewhere near, but always check it. That's the one thing that I'll always say. Never ever assume anything, even if you've gone through this process, okay. That's pretty good there. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to wedge the top and once again uh, repeat the process. Start at the top, set my laser, work my way down, making sure everything's right as I go along. Take your laser and set it to your top. Now I've got my line to work to, repeat the process. Now, as you can see, I've drilled and counter sunk these. Now, the reason I do it like this is because if we're using just a, a small slamming strip, it means that we can glue and plug these, sand it, and get it absolutely perfect. This is actually a casement. If you look at that door over there, you can see uh, the slamming strip, it's the full width of the door frame. It's just a nicer finish, and it's also traditional for a 1930s house. That's what we're replicating, so it doesn't really matter. It's just, it's just something I prefer to do. Also, when you're fitting your door frame, you want to make sure that the pilot drills that you go through are between five and six mil. Now, this is ideal for a number eight screw, or a number five screw, if it's old or new money, however you like to work. Now what that enables you to do is purchase your screw into your frame, and it also means that once the screw's in there, it's not failing on, the threads aren't failing on the wood, because that can be a real pain in the bob to manoeuvre the door. In with my screw. Like I say, just leave it loose, it's only so it's somewhere near. Second one. 
Make sure that your margins are right, that's pretty good. Take your spirit level or your laser, whichever one you prefer, just to make sure it's okay. That's nice and plumb, same as the other side, so now I'm going to spike it in at the bottom. And now I know that's not going anywhere, so now I can start getting the rest of the screws in and getting it plumbed up this way. Okay, so now we know that from bottom to the top, my plumb, once again, repeat. Check. Good. Two wedges. Repeat. Check. Looking good. Check. That's good. And there you go. So that's the frame in. Nice and square. Now one thing you do always check. Obviously the uh, door's going to be swinging open to this. So this is your hinge side. The door that's going in is 815, 3mm gap either side for the hinges. So that's going to mean an opening of between probably 820 and 821. So it's going to be right at the top, 821. And now every sort of 30 centimetres you want to be checking out 821. 821. Once again, 821. 821. And we know that's right because of where the baton is, like I said before. This just helps keep it parallel. So this is all nice and plumb. This level's all nice and parallel. 821 mil, side to side, internal. One final check to make sure that's bang on 90 degrees, which it is. Now, as I'm putting in a brand new manufactured door, I know that that's gonna be bang on square, and that's why I'm setting that to that. If it was an old recycled door, I'd be probably more tempted just to hang the hinge to get the door in, hinge it, and then hang the frame around the door. But I know I don't need to do that in this case. All right, I'll nice Another little thing when you're in this situation. Now, I enjoy doing door frames like this because they're not plastered in and the wedges haven't been trimmed off so you can actually get access to them so the last thing I'm probably going to do after I've hung the door is trim these wedges off because what it's going to enable me to do is if I need to tweak this frame to suit the door I'm able to do that rather than having to plane it down because I don't it's just one less it's just one more process that I can cut out and make it make the job happen a little bit quicker so I'm going to leave these in and like I say if when my, door, when my door swings, if I'm out by even half a mil, rather than planing something off to dress the door to the frame, I'm going to be able to hang the frame to the door, which is always a better job, I think. On a brand new door, it's pre-sanded, pre-finished, it's just ready to go. And if you start planing it down, obviously you're going to have to start sanding it, and it's just, like I say, it's just more work. So that's another thing that I'm going to do. So these are going to come out, and I'm going to start getting my hinges in the door. Nice one.